Let's get it poppin', it's the Prophet Zamar, L.O.Z. Soldier, and your Howard told me, wake up my people, it's almost over. In the synagogue of Satan been faking, we gon' expose him, so is iron rusted, so is his wickedness, they corroded. And John 3.16, the only verse these Christians quoting, I'm looking at him like, what the hell y'all been smoking? All praises to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is your Captain Kaya Ron from The Light of Zion. All praises to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Um, I really wanted to jump into this topic here about this brother that was killed in Fort Myers. You know, this is where we teach, you know, every Saturday, every Shabbat, every Friday. We go out there to teach our people in this area. And, you know, this is why we teach. This is why there's so much work that needs to be done. This is why we have to teach every weekend because there's so much work that needs to be done. Our communities are destroyed. There's churches everywhere, but our people are still being destroyed, right? Spiritually and physically. So I wanted to go over this article that happened a couple of days ago, and we're just going to jump right into it. You know, it's been on my spirit, and it's something that we have to be aware of, right? This is why what we do is so important, because we're trying to get our people off of breaking the commandments, right? Coming back to the most high, repenting, right, so we can build our nation again. So I'm just going to play this right here. Right, it says Fort Myers pastor says he baptized teen just before he was killed, man. Right? And this is why it's so important to understand these scriptures because we understand that and we're going to get and jump into the baptism. We're going to jump into what that actually truly means, right? Cuz clearly the brother was seeking a way out. The brother was trying to change his ways. Right? He was trying to change his ways and he considered his ways and he's trying to change it. And he was trying to go to the first place that he could think of to find that change, right? And he went to the Christian church, right? So let's go ahead and play this right here. When news breaks, we're following breaking news. We're tracking dangerous storms. Sweet news is there first. Clive and Cape Coral. Fair. We're pushing for answers. Everywhere. In Naples. For Myers. Weak news. Now. Weak news. First. Fair. Everywhere. A pastor is reacting after witnessing the baptism of a teenager just hours before he was shot dead in the street. We've been following the aftermath of Sunday night's tragic shooting in Fort Myers for you all week. 16-year-old Damari Jackson was killed when he jumped in front of a bullet to save his girlfriend. Earlier that morning, he'd taken his, the big first step in his faith. English reporter Marcelo Quadra joins us live in the newsroom now. Marcelo, the faith community is really grieving here. Well, Chris, it's hard not to feel for the family of Damari Jackson. Six mornings ago, he went to church and asked to be baptized. Six nights ago, he, he laid down his life for his girlfriend. The right, right. So before we continue this video, right, so and this is the mentality of it, right? It's the same mentality that people think, well, I go to church on Sunday, so God knows my heart. I'm right in the eyes of the most High because I go to church on Sunday, right? And he was thinking to himself, well, I got to change my life around, right? I got to get baptized. I got to commit myself to the most high, right? But he went to the Christian church, got baptized, and thought that's it. That's all he had to do, right? Let's go to Romans 10 because the brother had the zeal, right? The brother had the zeal. He wanted to change his ways and come back to the most high, right? He had the zeal to seek the most high, right? Let me just pull this up right here, all right? Right, he had the zeal to serve the most high. Let me bring that up. Romans 10 and 2. All right, let me bring this out right quick. This is a book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 2. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. The brother had a zeal of God. He said, I want to change my life around, I want to commit myself to the most high. Right, and the first place that he thought of was going to the Christian church and get baptized. Right. We understand baptism is only symbolism. Right. We understand the true washing is of the word. We're going to bring that out as well. But the brother said, OK, I want to seek the most high. Let me go to the church. Right. Let me go to the church. Right. For our brethren, Mercury, that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Right. We understand that true change comes from keeping the law, says and the commandments and having faith in the son. Yahawashai. That's the true change, not just getting dunked in water. Right. The Christian church would say, now we got the blood of Jesus on us. Right. 
They'll say we're saved, but then you walk out the street, you walk down the street and get shot and killed. How are you saved then? Right? Let's go back, man. But the brother was just trying to change his life around. All right, he was just trying to see, you know, seek the most high. You know, he had a zeal for that. And that's why it's so important as, as leaders of the community, as, as parents, right, that we teach our children these things while they grow up, right? So they're not, so they already have this understanding. So they're already seeking the most high at a young age, right? That we're, de that we're teaching our children these things before they even get out into the world. You see what I'm saying? Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 7, right? Deuteronomy 6 and 7. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 7. All right, the brother wanted to seek the most high. All right, let me put the Deuteronomy 6 and 7 right here. This book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 7, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and thou and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. All right. When you teach your kids these laws, strategies, and commandments, that sets them that sets, sets them up for success, right? They have protection from the Most High. Their angels keep charge over them, right? They have direction through the Most High. Their spirit will guide them and lead them, right? Through keeping the commandments and having faith in the Son. This thing, this thing has to be instilled in the household, right? You talk about Abraham. He knew the Most High says, "I know him that he will command his household." Right, this this something this is something that should happen in the household already, right? But the Christian church has already failed our people. He probably had a Bible in the house. He had a grandma that was probably taking him to church every Sunday, but he never got the understanding, right? I believe in them. I I truly believe in the right place at the right time and the wrong place at the wrong time, man. You want to be you want to have the Most High's favor. You want to be on the right side of the spectrum, right? The scriptures talk about the Most High's judgment is like a flood, right? Let's go to Genesis 18 and 19. This is why it's so important that we teach our children these things at a young age while they're growing up so it's instilled in their spirit, right? Why teach them Christmas, uh, St. Patrick's Day, all these other pagan holidays that has no benefit to their spiritual health? Why don't you teach them the law, set of the commandments, right? Genesis 18 and 19. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, Right? You have to have leaders in the household, a man and a woman, that's going to command their children, teaching them the law, statutes, and commandments. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord. What's keeping the way of the Lord? Keeping his law, statutes, and commandments. Right? Following after his ways. The most I will protect you. The most I will have his, his, his angels, you know, with you. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Most High may bring upon Abraham that which he's spoken of him. Right. And this is why it's so important that we build our, we have to build ourselves up so we can build our children up, man. The Christian church is not going into these scriptures and breaking it down. Right. These scriptures can keep you out of harm's way. There's so many times where I, the same road that I just drove on, somebody get in the accident. The same place I just left, somebody got in a shootout, right? The most I will protect you and preserve you if you're keeping his commandments and, and having faith in the son, right? And this is why it's so important that we come out to these laws. And this is why when we go out to teach our people, it's so important so we can put, the, put our people back on that right track, man. And that only comes by keeping the laws and the commandments, right? Let's get back to this video right here. It's sad, man. All right, let me just pull this up. All right. Let's see here. All right, let's go back to this video. All right. So it says the members of Rock Church is crazy because if you see our recent video, we spoke to the members of the Rock Church uh, through a couple days ago, right? A week ago, right? And it's just crazy how things work. And we try to speak to them and try to talk to them about keeping the laws. And, and they probably have the same mentality of, oh, well, you got the blood of Jesus now and you, now you are old, now you saved. 
right? We are still in this captivity. We still have to deal with our enemies, the enemies of our own people and the enemies of, our, of, these, of these other nations, right? Rock Church of Fort Myers. Myers. This, this is video, video where 16 year old Damari Jackson, Jackson started his Sunday. Sunday. He has, he has to, to be, be baptized. baptized. He obviously felt the pull of God on his heart. <laughs> right. So look, right. You got this Edomite on the phone. Yeah, he asked. He had the pull of God. Like, come on, man. Right. And uh, on his life, and um, he he felt that he needed to make that change. That he needed to get right with God. And how do you get right with God? How do you get in the good standing of God? You start by keeping His commandments. The fear of the Lord is the first step, man. Right? Let's get that Cyrac 19 and 18. Right? Cyrac 19 and 18. Let me pull it up right quick. Right? Like I said, the brother, he wanted to seek the most high, but then he went to the Christian church. Right? He went to the Christian church seeking that. They're not going to give him the understanding. They're not going to tell him to keep the commandments of God. Right. These things. This is how the angels keep charge over you. This is how the most High hears your prayers, man. Not through getting dunked in water. That's symbolism. That true word, that true baptism is through the word. And we're going to break that out, too. Right. Let's continue on that. I'm, I'm going to bring out Sirach 19. After uh, Pastor Wayne's Law told me by phone Friday. God tells us to always be ready. You never, never know, know when, when you will live, live your last day. day. What scripture says that God tells you to always be ready you don't know when you're going to live your last day. Can he provide a book, chapter, verse? That's who he went to when he tried to get his, quote, unquote, uh, um, start his life of faith. He went to a man that's cool in the scripture that's not even in the Bible. They were going to lead him down to the spiritual destruction if he continued to go to that church. Right? And the church is not going to deal with these community problems. You got church, you got, you got multiple churches in Fort Myers. But you still get, see people getting shot and killed. How is that possible? How come the, you got more churches, but the crime rate has not decreased yet? You got more churches, but, 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 but the robbing and killing has not decreased yet. So what is the church actually doing but stealing our people's money, right? And keeping them docile and causing them to, to go through, all, to, uh, to gain more strongholds, right? Just hours after Damari was baptized, he died. A hero. It shocks you when you first heard about it. It saddens you um, because um, you realize the scripture is so true when it says that today is a day of salvation. Sunday night, Damari was with what his girlfriend walking along Franklin. Killed? What does that have to do with anything? Salvation is being saved from the hands of our enemies, man. Salvation is being saved from the hand of our enemies. What does that have to do with anything? That makes no sense. But that's their spiritual leader, man. That's the person that was going to guide them to the kingdom or put them on the right path to righteousness. In street, when a fight turned into a shooting, Damari took two bullets and died so his girlfriend could live. Reached out to a couple of family members and um, just, um, you know, they're, they're in their grieving stage, obviously, right now. And, and that's that's tough. The, the best thing that we could do for them as a church body is just be there. And if they need anything, then, you know, we let them know that, that we're here for them. And Damari's family told me they're not ready to. Uh, man, I feel as if this man is only given his own statement because he has he has to. Right. He's not addressing the brute problem. Right. About the, the, the issues in the community. Right. This is an issue. This is a spiritual issue, man. Right. Let, let's get to the precepts, man. Right. Let's get let me get that in Cyrac real quick. Right. This is a spiritual issue. Right. The man wanted to seek the most high. We understand that he wanted to seek the most high. Right. We get that. Let's bring this out. Right, it's the book of Sirach, right in the Apocrypha, chapter 19, verse 18. The fear of the Lord is the first step to be accepted of him, and wisdom obtaineth his love. The fear of the Lord is the first step. Once we understand what the fear of the Lord is, then we can start to understand the Most High. Then we will receive that protection of the Most High. Right? Let's see what the fear of the Lord is. Let's go to Sirach chapter 2, verse 15. That's the first step, man. 
They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, and they that love him will keep his ways. That's the fear of the Lord, by keeping his word. Right? The Christian church will say you got to be, be baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right? No, the fear of the Lord, the first step is to keep his commandments, man. That's the first step. Right? Next verse. They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well-pleasing unto him, and they that love him shall be filled with the law. Right? Doing those things that are pleasing in his sight by keeping the commandments of God. Right? And having faith in the Son. This is why it's so important to keep these commandments. These commandments keep you out of harm's way, man. Right? It keeps you out of harm's way. This is why it's so important for us to continue to pray to the Most High that our people wakes up. It's not going to be the last time somebody gets shot and killed. Right? The scriptures talk about blood touching blood. Right? And this is the issue because the scriptures give you so much knowledge and wisdom of these things that's happening. But the Christian church does such a terrible job at trying to prepare our people spiritually for what's to come. Right? Let's get Matthew 24 and 12, man. And because iniquity shall abound, because lawlessness shall abound, right? Because people out here not keeping the commandments of God. The nation of Israel is not keeping the commandments of God, right? Since transgression, since iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. That person that was doing that shoe and he didn't care who he hit. He, he didn't care who he hit, right? He don't care who was around. It's because of the love of many shall wax cold. Iniquity has abounded in our communities. The brother was just trying to seek a way out, trying to seek the most high, and not any get shot and killed. Right? That's why it's such a dangerous doctrine to teach that, oh, yeah, we're saved already. How are we saved when you can walk down the street and somebody kills you, man? Right? And we're still in this condition. We are not saved yet. We only saved when we call upon the Lord. Once we're saved out of the hand of our enemies, that's when we receive our salvation, man. Right? There's a salvation you receive when you have faith in the Mashiach Yahushua, but the but the salvation is but and then there's a salvation where we're saved out of the hand of our enemies. Right? When there's when when, when the Most High wipes away all our tears. Right? Let's go to Psalms chapter eighteen, verse three. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. That's any that's enemies of our own people and enemies of these other nations, man. That's when we will be saved. Where we don't have to deal with these other nations anymore. We don't have to worry about seeing our brother getting shot and killed down in the street. That's when we will be saved, man. Right? You know, it's just so much that we got to do when it when it comes to waking up the nation again, right? That's why Yahushua said he was moved with compassion when he saw these things, right? He saw the pain of our people, the suffering of our people. He was moved with compassion, right? Let me go to Matthew 9, right? All right, let me get Matthew 9. This will be my last scripture. Let's book of Matthew 9, chapter 9, verse 36. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Every time we go out to teach our people, we move with compassion. We see our people destroyed, drunk out of their mind spiritually and physically. Right? They don't know what's going on. Right? They think they're thinking going to church on Sunday is equivalent to be obedient to the most high. Right? They got a Bible, they have an open Bible on their dash, thinking that this is all I need. Right? But they're suffering, they're in pain, they're going through trials and tribulations and depression and sadness. Right? Their spiritual leaders are, are, are destroying them, right? You got that gospel music is a psychological weapon on our people, right? Strongholds on our people. They don't know how to break out of those chains, those strongholds of Christianity. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them because they fainted. Our people have fainted. They lost their way, right? They're used and abused, spiritually abused, psychologically abused. And we're scattered abroad as a sheep having no shepherd. There's no leaders in our communities teaching our people to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. 
that were the chosen people of God, the Israelites, the true Jews, God's chosen people, right? And were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. That's why it's so important to congregate with your brothers, right? You shouldn't be at home all day knowing that you need, you, you an Israelite, knowing that there's so much work that needs to be done out here, right? That we're trying to wake up our people so we can try to uh, remove that, that, that evil eye that we see within our brothers, right? Being that light to our people. Then he saith unto the disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few, right? We need more laborers in this thing, right, to help wake up our people. Right, so we so when these articles come around, we can we can start decreasing the crime rate. We understand the crime rate. We understand these things are spiritual, but that's why we have to teach these commandments to the Most High. Come, hallelujah! And with that, I say shalom to the twelve tribes of Israel. Hopefully, everybody was edified. Continue to stay, uh, study, continue to pray, continue to fast. All praise to the the powers of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Shalom.